Okay, so we're now going to start again with our other side and we're basically going to mirror what we did with the first side. So just lay your pieces out again as I've done here and then we're going to use our masking tape just to join these together so we don't have to do our pencil marks three times. So just put a little bit at the top and bottom, making sure your pieces are level. Join that piece in as well. So turn your piece around then and we'll start again with our first pencil mark, which is 10 millimetres from the bottom edge. So 10 millimetres, 25 sixty-fourths of an inch. And you want to do that at both sides. The next one is 33 millimetres, and that is 1 and 19 sixty-fourths of an inch. So 33 millimetres, 1 and 19 sixty-fourths of an inch. Again, do that at both sides. And then stay over this side and your next one is 98 millimetres from the bottom edge. So you're just going to do that one on your longer pieces. So 98 millimetres three and seven eighths of an inch. So then turn that piece, join those marks up, place in the rule just below to allow for the thickness of your pencil nib. Like that. Move the tape at the bottom so you can get your lower pencil mark all the way across. And then join that one as well. Like that. And remove the other pieces of tape. So push those pieces to one side for now and bring in the two thick shelves and we're going to drill the holes for the pin hinges. And just because we're working the opposite way round, we'll come in from the right hand side. Just to sort of keep it all as a mirror image of the first, the first build. And we're going to do our first pencil mark 1.5 millimetres or one sixteenth of an inch in from that right hand side of the piece. So just do a little pencil mark going up like that. Do that on the other piece as well. And then turn the piece and we're going to go back along that line 1.5 millimetres or one sixteenth of an inch from the front edge and then do your little pencil dot like that. Same on the other one. 1.5 millimetres, 1 16th of an inch. You can then erase the pencil mark and the little dot will stay there. So I've then got a 0.75 millimetre drill bit in here and you can drill your hole. And we're now ready to begin construction. Okay, so we are actually going to build this one slightly differently to the first side. And that is just because I'm more comfortable building from left to right. So it will just mean sort of putting the pieces together slightly differently. And we're going to start then by attaching the top on the inside edge of the back piece there and so that the pieces are sitting flush. So apply glue along the back of your top piece so that your drilled hole is towards the front edge and on the right hand side. So just sit that along the top of the back piece there. Make sure you've got flush sides and then what you can do is bring in your spare piece of strip just to make sure as well that it's sitting right along the top of that back piece. Hold on to it and remove any excess glue. Like that. We're then going to attach that short side, which I've called the inner top side. So apply glue to the top and back or along and a short edge rather. And then again, that will sit on that inside edge. So flush along the side of the side piece Get that bit lined up first. You can use your piece of strip again, if that helps. Just push that alongside it like that and you'll know both pieces then 
a flush and then join your top piece. You may just need to pull that down slightly to meet the top of it and that will square it all up. So get that lined up and then press and hold. I'm just going to jiggle that about a little bit so that I can get a better join there and give the pieces a good press. I'm just making sure that that top piece is still sitting flush with the top of the back there. Again, you've got time to move things around before the glue really begins to take. Don't forget about your excess glue on the inside there. So we're now going to attach the central shelf, which is the smaller piece cut from your 1.5 sheet wood. And that's going to sit above that pencil line, but just check that that is the correct size. You haven't got anything overhanging at this end. And I think I've got a little bit there and it's actually paint on the side there. So I'm just going to sand that off. So just give that a couple of sweeps along the sandpaper there. I'll do that at both ends. And then try again. See if you've got any sort of little ridges no, that's fine this time. So apply glue to a long and a short edge and then sit that just above that line so that you're sort of hiding the line as well. And then we'll bring in our rule to act as a set square to make sure that it's sitting straight along that shelf. So if you bring in the rule and first of all just pop it in like that so that it's flat against the side and the shelf. You'll get that straight edge there. And then what you can actually also do is position that on the side and then check that you're straight in there. And then when you're happy that that's in the right place, you can give those a press. Again, don't forget your excess glue. OK, so we're now going to attach the other thick shelf and that sits underneath the side piece and so that the drilled hole is on the right hand side and obviously towards the front hand edge. Now, whereas we just used the rule last time, we can actually now draw a line now that we've got this piece in place. So just put the rule so that it's flush along the side of the side piece and sit in underneath the side piece there. On the thicker side piece and then you can just do a faint pencil line going across like that and then we can use that to keep that piece straight and that will sit obviously below that pencil line so apply glue first of all just to the bottom of that thicker side there like that and then to the back of your thick shelf And then pop that into place so it's sitting underneath the thicker side. Get out of the way there. And you can use that pencil line then to keep it straight all the way along. And you should just be below that pencil line. Like that. Make sure you're not overhanging at this side. And then push it right up against the bottom of that thicker side piece. Again, making sure that you've got that nice flush edge there. And if you need to sand any from this piece, do it from the side where you haven't drilled the hole, otherwise that will alter the position of the hole. And I just had to sand a little bit off that edge. And then remove your excess glue. And if you're worried about being able to see any of those pencil lines when the pieces are in place, we can just put another coat of paint over those. We're then going to attach, I think what I've called the inner bottom side, but the other sort of 1.5 millimetre piece that you've marked up there. And that will sit underneath there so that your pencil lines are straight and it's right along the edges of the side piece there. So apply glue to the back and top. Let's turn like that and get that piece into place. sure you've got those nice flush lines. Just use your finger to make sure that you're flush along there. You can use your piece of strip as well. 
And I will certainly be doing another coat on the outside of mine. Just because where I've sanded, I've got um, sort of like a bare piece up there and in this central section here. Like that. Remove your excess glue. So we're now going to attach the shelf and the bottom and both of these will sit just below those pencil lines. So first of all check that your sizing is correct and make any adjustments that you need to and then you can glue those into place. So we're now ready to attach the remaining side. So put the piece onto its side like that and apply glue to all of the open edges. Okay, and then lay that down again. Bring in your side, just lay it into place. Get the top and bottom edges flush and then you can have a look inside to make sure that all of those pieces are sitting where they should. So you want a nice flush top there. And then just have a peep in and line up those shelves. They're actually all sitting quite nicely in there. So give it a press. I'm going to hold onto that and remove the excess glue. And we've just got a um, final moulding to put into place and then we can put some masking tape on. So apply glue to those bottom edges and sit the moulding into place again making sure that it's not overlapping that bottom shelf. Check with your finger that you've got a nice flush edge in there so we can get the draw in. And then give it a press. So I'm actually going to start by just putting a few pieces of masking tape going across. And the first one just to hold that moulding into place there. So I'll pull the tape nice and tightly. I'm going to get another piece across the thicker shelf there. I'm just going across where all the sort of supported areas are and then at the top there I'm actually going to put one piece going over the whole side. I've got a little bit of lift in there so that will hold that down as well. That's a big piece of tape there. Again, pull it nice and tightly. Make sure your pieces are staying where they should. piece can be left to dry. Okay so you can now go ahead and cut the pieces needed for the doors and drawers. So remember to measure each opening separately, don't just assume that the drawers on one side will be the same as on the other and certainly with mine I've got about a half a millimetre difference between the top drawers. So when you're measuring for your drawers you want to measure height, width and depth and then deduct that half a millimetre if that from each of those measurements. Now I have included, again, as I always do, the measurements in the cutting list, but they are just to be used as a guide. It's always best to measure the opening and then cut the pieces accordingly. With the doors, you want to measure your height and deduct the half a millimetre. Again, if that, I always say half a millimetre, it's probably about a quarter of a millimetre from the height measurement to ensure that the door will open smoothly. And then you want to measure, if I just bring that in, from the edge of the wardrobe to the outside edge of this piece, because remember our door is going to be overlapping. So really you want to cut it to the same width as the top piece, whereas normally we'd have a side in the way to deduct. So this time you just want to cut it to the exact size of your top piece there so that the door then sits on top of this shorter side piece. So the width will be the same and then for your height deduct that quarter of a millimetre so that we get a nice smoothly opening door. I've also cut the mouldings for the doors 
but I can resize those once we've rounded one long edge just to make sure that they're the exact size as well. But with the drawers, I haven't yet cut the mouldings. And then once we've put these together, fitted them, made sure we've got that perfect fit, we can then go ahead and cut the mouldings to the exact size. So we're going to begin by constructing the drawers. So take the base and apply glue along each short edge. Like that. Pop that back down and attach the side pieces, making sure you've got nice flush edges along the front and back. And here you can bring in your pieces of strip wood and just press those against the sides just to make sure that you're getting that even pressure all the way along. Good press like that. And then just carefully slide that along. That can one can be left to dry, and then you can work your way along. And then you can work your way back along the line, attaching your front and back pieces. So again, just apply glue along the front and back open edges. Pop that back down and attach the front and back pieces, making sure that you've got nice flush sides. You may need to pull the sides out to meet the sides of your front and back pieces as the sides will sort of try to fall inwards as the glue begins to dry. And then once you've got them in a nice position, you can give it all a gentle press. You can even bring those strips back in here and press them along the front and back as well. And again, you're then getting that even pressure along those areas too. Again, just give that a gentle shove along your work surface and that can be left to dry. And you can continue along your line. <laughs> so just push the drawers to one side for now to dry and we're going to round off one long edge of each door. So with your sandpaper flat on your work surface, hold the piece at a 45 degree angle and as you sweep it towards you, bring it into an upright position. And five sweeps is usually enough to get that nice gently rounded edge. Do that on the underside of the piece as well, like so. And then just sand that piece in your hand using a piece of 500 grade sandpaper, just to tidy up the edge. And then do the same with your remaining door. So now sit the first door into place so that it's sitting nicely towards the front edge of the wardrobe so you've got that nice flush edge. And we're just going to push a pin in through the hole to make a little indentation in the top and bottom of the door for where we need to drill the holes, just as we did with the main part of the wardrobe. So just make sure that's sitting flush along there. Push the top pin in just until you feel it start going into the top of the piece of wood. Remember, we're not trying to push it all the way in. And then at the bottom there, you'll need to cut one of your pins so that you can get it into the drawer opening. Just trim that like that. And again, just work that into the bottom of the door. Just enough to make that little pin mark in there. Just pushing it up with the pliers there. And that, like that. And then what you can actually do is just open the door to make sure that you've got a nice smooth opening door. So I'm happy with that so I can now go ahead and drill the holes. So do the same with your remaining door. So once you've drilled the holes in the doors, you can go ahead and cut the pieces needed for the mouldings. And how I size those is just to leave a five millimetre border around the outside edge. We're then going to bevel them off and again, we're just going to do that in our hand just because we're working with such a thin piece of wood. So support it as much as you can with your fingers and then just sweep your sandpaper along at a 45 degree angle. We're just really getting rid of those sharp edges. And 
and that's about all you need at each edge of the wood. So once you've beveled your moulding, that can now be attached to the door. So apply glue to the back of the moulding. I'm just going to be placing mine by eye, but if you wanted to put a couple of pencil marks onto your door, you know, one at the top and then one at the side, and then line your piece up, you can do that. I've got my clamps here as well. We'll clamp it into place whilst the glue dries. Very important that you do clamp it, otherwise it will sort of try to curl upwards as the glue is drying and lay that into place. Give it a good press down and get rid of any excess glue. And you can see already as the glue is beginning to dry, can you see that edge there trying to curl upwards and that's what, ha what happens when you don't clamp things down and then you'll always have that gap in. I always begin by putting one at each corner and then I just fit around as many as I can. As I always say, you can never use too many clamps. <laughs> and that piece can then be put to one side to dry. So whilst the door mouldings are drying into place, you can fit the drawers. Now you'll probably need to do some sanding, but you only ever want to do a little bit at a time. Try the drawer into the opening and then if you need to do a bit more, just do a little bit more. What you don't want to do is sand too much and then when you put them back into the opening, you've got a lot of gap in around the outside edges. Now if you're a little bit unsure on drawers, do take a look at my YouTube video, Taking a Good Look Into Drawers, <laughs> where I give you lots of tips and tricks on getting the perfect fitting drawer. Once your drawers fit nicely, you can then remeasure and cut your pieces for your moulding. And I actually do it so that I take off three millimetres or one eighth of an inch from the width and the height. And then you've got that 1.5 millimetre border, one sixteenth of an inch all the way around the edge of the moulding. So glue the mouldings into place. So I've attached the mouldings. And as you can see here, I've just put a couple of clamps on each drawer front just to hold those into place whilst the glue dries. Now what I actually want to do now is start gluing the wardrobe together. And I want to do that before we fit the doors because it's going to be a lot easier to apply masking tape and clamps to the sides and we'll do them one at a time, you know, without the doors in place than when they are as we might sort of cause a little bit of damage. So we'll get all of these pieces glued together and then we can start building it all back up with our doors. So bring in your first side and just butt that up against the back, lay down on your desk like this and just make sure that it's laying nice and flat against the side. Now I'm just saying that because if any of your pieces are sort of sticking out, you're not going to get that nice flush join along the side there. Now if you do find that you've got any pieces sticking out, then you just want to sand that flat against your sandpaper on your work surface, just going across in the one direction like that. And I've already done mine, just to make sure I've got that nice flat surface. And then we're going to glue that against the side like that so that the back of each piece is flush and also obviously the top and bottom. So I've got here my masking tape and I've also got my five large clamps and then we'll use those to actually clamp the two pieces together and that will hold it together all nice and solid whilst the glue dries. So begin by applying the glue to the side of your first side piece. You can put it directly onto the piece if you prefer. I always end up putting on a bit too much. I'll just take it from my card and make sure you get it right along the edges and into the corners. Completely covered. Like so, lay them down again. And then just use your fingers to make sure you've got flush edges along the top and along the bottom here. <laughs> Slide in about a bit. Begin sort of pressing them together. 
all the time checking that they're staying where they should. If you've got a bit too much glue on, as I have, you'll find that they're sliding around. When you're pushing them together, make sure you're pushing on the supported parts of your sides, so on the top and bottom. Press on the side of the shells. Okay, so carefully remove any excess glue along that inside edge if you have any. If not, you can go ahead and attach the clamps. So I'm going to put one right at the top edge there and I'm sort of sitting it in the centre of that side piece. I'm going to put one on the bottom as well. And I think I might put a couple of small ones on those bottom mouldings as well just to really hold that part of it together. But get your larger clamps down that side first. One more in there. I don't know if I can go into the drawer. No, so I'll go into the central bit again there. Oops. And then move that one along a bit. So spread them out as evenly as you can. And then I am actually going to put a couple of smaller ones on that, um, those bottom mouldings just to pull those together. Like that. That piece can now be left to dry and in the meantime we'll get back to our doors and attach the doorknobs. So drill the hole in the centre of the straight edge of the door and again just use a little bit of glue and put the doorknob into place making sure it's sitting flat against the door. Remove any excess glue and that door is now ready for paint. You can also now attach the draw knobs. Begin by making a pencil mark in the centre of the draw front. Drill a hole and attach your draw knob again using a small dot of glue. And the drawers as well are now ready for paint. So I left that part of the wardrobe drying over lunch so that's now completely dried into place. So we're ready to attach the remaining side. So again, start off by making sure you've got the nice smooth side piece and then apply your glue. So I didn't actually use the masking tape in the end, but if you find that you put your clamps on and it's still trying to pull apart, especially along that back edge, then you can just pop a bit of tape over the back. But if you're using the larger clamps, you'll probably find that it's enough to hold it together. Okay, so again, lay that down so that the back of each piece is flush. Make sure you've got that nice flat bottom edge there. Flat as well at the top. And again, I'm going to pop the larger clamps into place. Final one in the centre there. And then again, I'm going to pop a couple along the mouldings at the bottom there. And then let's just have a look at that back edge. So that is actually being held together nicely there, but if you did have any gap in then do just pop some masking tape across. But for now I'm going to leave that to dry. So you can now go ahead and cut the wardrobe top pieces. So we've got that one piece in the centre there and then those two end pieces. Now I did it in three pieces just because I think it's going to be difficult to get that really nice sharp bevel along the edges if we do it all as one piece. But what we will do is bevel these thicker pieces and then we'll cut one piece from 0.8 sheet wood and do that as one piece and that will actually be easier to create the beveled edges in. So what we're going to do now is bevel these pieces. So start with your centre top and we're just going to bevel the long front edge. That's just starting to bevel off but keep going until you've got a nice sharp bevel. 
like that. You can then just tidy that piece up in your hand with a piece of 500 gram sandpaper again. And then with the outer pieces, we're going to do the front edge and one side. And obviously you want to do those opposite on each piece. So for our right hand side piece, we'll do the front edge and the right hand side. And for the left hand side piece, the front edge and the left hand side. So begin with your front edge. And then once you've got that nice sharp bevel, you can do your right hand edge. Again, tidy that piece up in your hand. And then do the front edge and the left hand side of your remaining side piece. Okay, so your top pieces, your doors, your drawers. I've also cut the clothes rail are now all ready for paint. And you can also touch up any areas on the actual wardrobe, perhaps if you removed a bit of paint as you were joining the pieces together. And then when we cut that final top piece that I was talking about from the 0.8 sheet, we'll attach that, so we'll get it cut and shaped, we can attach it and then we can give that a coat of paint. That will be when all of the doors are fitted and everything's together. And I think that will be an easier way of doing it. So I'm going to apply my first coat of paint now. It's almost six o'clock so I can then leave that dry in overnight come back, sand and do the final coat in the morning and then we can put everything together and I'm really looking forward to doing that because I think this is going to look really good once it's all together and I can't wait to try it into place. So I'll see you all again in the morning. So we're now ready to put all of the pieces together and we're actually going to begin by gluing the clothes rail into place. And I'm actually just going to glue mine into place by eye, but do just make some little pencil marks if you're not very good at measuring by eye. So just put a little bit of glue at each end of your rail and then just fit it into place. I normally go, I don't know, 12 millimetres to half an inch from the top edge. Get it into place and then you want to just have a look from the front and make sure that you've got that sitting straight across there. Like I say, if you're not very good at measuring by eye, then do sort of put some little pencil marks at either side. OK, so what we're going to do now is get rid of these pencil marks. OK, so lay the piece down and you can either use an eraser or a piece of fine grade sandpaper for this. I always start off by trying with the eraser and then if it doesn't come off, I go in with a bit of sandpaper. Just bring in a little bit of 500 grade there. Just sand along that edge. And sometimes you might find if you've sort of got a little bit of glue over the pencil mark, that it won't come off, you've sort of sealed it in. So you might just have to put a little bit extra paint on, a little bit more paint on. So we're now ready to hinge the doors. So bring in your dressmaking pins and just begin by pushing a pin into each of the drilled holes in your doors. And then I just like to very gently press them down on my work surface just so I know that they've gone all the way in. And then using your pliers or your wire cutters, just trim those pins to about three millimeters in length. And you don't need to measure that, but just trim off just sort of above the top of the door there. I normally use my pliers as a bit of a marker. So if I know if I put them sort of along the base of the door and then trim that the pins will be the right length. Okay, so we'll begin with the doors in the centre. So remove the pin from the top of the door there, pop that to one side and then poke the bottom pin into the hole at the bottom of the wardrobe like that. and then push the door into place sitting it nice and flush along the front of the wardrobe like that. <laughs> I'm just making sure that I'm close enough, but obviously I want to fit the whole thing on camera, so it's a bit of an awkward one. 
and then bring back in that top pin and you're now going to find the hole in the top of the door. Now if it doesn't go straight in don't worry because hinging doors can be quite tricky but we know the holes are in the correct place so you just need to keep trying so keep relining your door you know relining it up inside the opening and there we are. Now it doesn't normally work out that easily sometimes you can be there for a while keep straightening your door and trying again so don't worry if that happens. Don't push the pin all the way in and then you just want to try your door make sure that it's opening and closing smoothly and then you can go ahead and push the pin all the way in but what I'm actually going to do is fit the second door before I push that pin in because then if we have any problems if we need to maybe sand a little bit off the centre of the doors we can do that to both doors to keep things even. The thing is once you've pushed that pin in you can't get it out again without sort of causing damage to your wardrobe so always just sort of leave that until you're really sure that you're happy with the doors. Obviously if you were just doing a, a sort of single door piece of furniture then you could push that in. So get the second one into place. Now, as you probably know by now I always like doors and drawers and things to be tighter rather than looser. And that is actually a really nice tight fit so I haven't got any gapping down the centre or anything. If you ever find that something's gone wrong and you have got gapping down the centre what you can actually do is put a strip in the centre there really is a bit of a cheat to hide the join but you will find that some pieces of furniture do have a strip down the centre in between the two doors and what I keep meaning to do is do a um, you know a complete sort of door tutorial just as a one-off video as I did for the drawers and I think that would be really helpful so I'll, I'll uh, that's on my list so I'll try and get around to that at some point but that's just a little tip there if you ever find you've got too much gapping in between the doors and you really don't want to remake them and then we're doing the same thing again with our second door so again that's not going in straight away I'm going to sort of rejiggle the door as you see there I open the door and that just helps to get that pin to go into the hole But I'm just checking that that doesn't make the doors then too tight to actually close. So let's try that. No, that's actually still a really nice fit. So let me just try opening and closing that one again. Bit of a squeak there. That's that sort of tight door squeak. Like I said, I don't mind that. I'd rather they be tight than there be sort of too much gap in. Or that they either go in or come out on their own. And that's another thing, if you ever find that your doors are, are going in like that, it just means they're a little bit too small for the opening. But what you can then do is just cut a couple of little pieces of strip wood, you know, just five or six millimetres across and put them at the top and bottom there. And that will act like a stop. So you'd place them back, you know, the thickness of your door and then the door would just sit against it and you find you don't get that sort of falling inwards then. But I'm really happy with these doors now, so I'm going to go ahead and push those pins in. Push it all the way down so you've got a nice flat surface at the top, which we'll then attach our top pieces to. Like that, and then we can do the same thing at the side. So again, remove the top pin first because the bottom pin is obviously easier to get in when it's in the door. Pop the bottom into place there. And this, remember, sits on the outside edge of the side. Get it lined up. I'm going to leave it slightly open there because otherwise I'm just sort of pushing it in. And again, try to find the hole. There. So again, another quite nice one there. So just check that your door opens and closes nicely. And that is a little bit tight on that right hand side. It's not actually going in at the bottom. So the first thing I'm going to do is check that I have actually got the right door on the right side. So I'm going to take that out again. And that can happen as well, especially if your doors are slightly different sizes. 
Let me just try that one in there. No, that doesn't go in at all. So it's definitely on the right side. So I may just need to do some gentle sanding. Just that sort of bottom edge, I think, that doesn't want to go, doesn't want to sit in. Although, actually, again, that's quite tight, but I've got quite a nice line along the side there. So I don't really want to sand anything off. So it will be tight to open. But as I say, I don't mind that. I'd rather it look nicely fitted in the opening there. So I'll try to put the pin in again. There we are. <laughs> so I can now go ahead and push that pin into place as well. Like that. And then do the same with the remaining door. So before we go ahead and fit the top pieces, just try your drawers into place. And you may find that after you've painted them, they will be a little bit tight and you'll need to do a little bit of sanding. But as I said earlier, only ever sand a tiny amount at a time. Try them again and then sand more if you need to. But don't sort of be tempted to take too much off as again, you'll be creating that gap in around the outside edges. Okay, so now let's glue the top pieces into place. Okay, so apply glue along the top of the wardrobe. We're going to go all the way along, making sure you get it right along the edges, like that. And then we'll start with that central piece. So you want to position it so the straight edge is along the back and making sure that you're lining it up with the sides just of that central area. Just rub your fingers along the back there to make sure you've got that nice straight line or flush line, like that. And we're then going to position the sides so that again the flat edge is along the back and you've got the overhanging edges along the side and front. Actually, what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of glue along that flat side as well. Like that. And then just sit that into place along that central piece. So you've got that nice line along the back. Press it all into place. And then the same for that remaining side. And again, I'm just going to put a bit of glue along the side of that piece. Sit that along there. Again, checking for that flush line along the back. So what I'm going to do now is just put a bit of masking tape straight over the top. And we'll put a few clamps along the front edge as well. Okay, so a nice long piece right across like that. Have a look around the back and if you've got any lifting then you can put some pieces going straight over. That all looks like it's sitting nice and flat to me so I'll leave the back. And I'm just going to put a few clamps along the front edge. I'll use three of these larger clamps along there. Like that, one at each side. actually just going to put one large one in each side door. Ooh. I'm holding on to it because it's toppling forwards now, it's sort of top heavy. Lay that piece down and that can be left to dry. Okay so now cut the wardrobe top piece and we're going to place the wardrobe upside down on top of it so that we've got an even overhang at each side and that will just be about a millimetre and you've got that nice flush line again along the back edge. So position it on there like that. Just hold it gently into place and then 
draw a little pencil line along the front edge of each of those sides just lightly you don't need to go all the way along but just to give us an indication of where that comes to and then along the side of the central part there so we just do that line at the end of each of those as well so we've got a line to follow there so you can then remove the wardrobe and we're then going to draw a line one millimeter in front of the pencil lines at each side so place your rule so it's just about a millimeter in front of those and take a exact measurement if you wish i'm just going to do that by eye like that and then draw a line along just lightly along there and then measure from the outside edge to your internal pencil line there that we did at the side of the central part and I make that 45 and a half and then take off that millimeter again so do a little pencil line there 44 and a half and then you want to do that same pencil mark along the back edge and this is just so we can get that line straight and then join that up just going up to that first line so what we're actually doing is just copying the top of the wardrobe onto this piece, allowing for an extra millimeter in front of the sections to be cut out. So then do that same thing at the other side. So measure from the edge of the wood up to your pencil line and then take off a millimeter and then do that at the other side of the wood as well. So we now want to cut away these sections here at either side. So whenever you're cutting sections from a piece of wood, you always want to cut against the grain first, and that will help to prevent the wood from splitting. But what I also like to do is just do a little L shape in the sort of corner section of the bit that I'm cutting out. So just do a little line with your craft knife like that. Careful of your fingers. Same on the other one there. And then along your other line. And what this is doing is just sort of making a little block so that you're not going to go past the line and cut into the piece that you don't want to cut. You just need to do a little sort of nick like that at the edge of each section. And then we're going to cut, as I say, against the grain first. We'll do that side as well. And then we can cut along our longer lines. Make sure it's completely free before you try to pull it away. You don't want to split the wood. Okay. Same at this end, I'll turn that around to do that. Like so. So the edge of the wood that's got your pencil lines on it is the bottom edge so that will be placed against the top of the wardrobe. So we now want to create a bevel along each of these cutouts and along each side obviously sort of coming up from the underneath there. Now again because this is a, a fragile piece of wood we're just going to bevel it in our hand. So you want to sort of hold the piece so that you can support it as much as possible. Now I'm actually using a harsher sandpaper this time. I'm using a 180 grade just so I can do less sweeps. Well, that's the plan anyway. So just sweep along at a 45 degree angle. And we're not going to get sort of like a perfectly sharp bevel on this, but we're just taking off that square edge and making it look like a more finished piece. So just sweep along until you see that edge go in and you're getting that nice sort of rounded or beveled edge. Be really gentle 
I'm supporting it as much as I can against my finger there. I don't know if you can see on camera how that's just sort of starting to bevel off and that looks actually quite nice. So I'm going to leave that one at that and then you want to come along the other straight edges. And just be gentle with it as well, you don't want to go too harshly and end up splitting the wood. Do your ends as well, same way. And then you want to get in and do those little corner sections. So again, again, just support the piece, be really careful and make sure you're not digging the sandpaper into your edge there. So just keep it a little bit of wet away from that edge. Same at the other side. And this piece is now ready to attach. So again, apply glue along the top of your wardrobe. Like that. And then attach the top piece, making sure you've got that nice flush line along the back edge and an even overhang at either side. And then the rest of it will fall nicely into place. Use your fingers on that back edge again, like that, and then give it a press, and that covers up those joins and just really sort of finishes it off. So press it into place, make sure you're happy with the positioning, carefully remove any excess glue. front edge there and then we'll do the same thing again with our tape and clamps. So one big long piece go right over the back like that, pull nice and tightly. Let's have a look at the back and see how that's sitting. I am actually going to put a couple of pieces over the back this time just because the thinner the wood, the more likely it is to lift up. So we'll just have a piece there like that, that side as well. I'm just wondering whether to put another piece. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put another long piece right across the front there, just sort of hold these bits down, and then we'll still come in with our clamps. corner there, getting it in as close as I can to that corner. Those three again on there. I'll just grab another couple for the end cupboards. And again, that can be left to dry. Once you've allowed enough time for the glue to dry, remove the masking tape and just gently sand along the top. Get rid of the sanding dust with a soft brush and then you can add a coat of paint to the top and any other areas that you want to touch up. And there is the completed wardrobe. And I'm really happy with this piece. Now I know this has been a rather long tutorial but I hope you won't be put off from having a go at making this piece. I like to include as much detail as possible to make the tutorials as easy as possible and so that you can sort of follow along and build with me. Now if you do enjoy these longer and more detailed tutorials then please do consider coming over and joining me on my Patreon channel where I share a furniture tutorial every month on the 20th of each month and the membership fee is just £5 or $5 a month and for that you get three videos a month. So the furniture tutorial, a monthly vlog and my 1940s dolls house series and I'll pop the website address to my patron channel below. I do hope you'll pop over and take a look. But now it's time to go and put the wardrobe into place in the dolls house. And there is the wardrobe in place. And I think that looks really good. 
I'm so pleased with that. Now, if you remember in an earlier episode of, I think, My Doll's House Diary, I did mention that I was going to be remaking the bed. And I think with that slightly smaller, more to scale bed, that will look even nicer in there. But again, I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you do have a go at making the wardrobe, then please share your photos in my Facebook group, Little Bits and Pieces by You. And if you're not already a member, then just head over to my Facebook page where you can request to join. But that's it for today. Take care and I'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye.